So I would now request Dr. Jayant Kumar, Senior Director, GEUSA, to please come on the dice and give his presentation. Uh, drivers and barriers, that's what Prithpal and I have been asked to present. And it will be real quick, so I hope that reduces your stress level a little bit, given the long session we have been running. So when you really look at the drivers and you really think about what's the technical driver, what's the business driver, what's the regulatory drivers, I mean, those are the kind of things that you immediately question in your mind, right? So real quick, when you look at the technical drivers, in fact, I have taken a little longer historical perspective. If you really look at what we have done in the industry in the last 40 years, there are a lot of technology improvement that we have done. And so it's a quick snapshot. 40 years ago, we focused on the bulk power grid stability, primarily the transmission level. Then we got into the deregulation, and then we got into focus on how am I going to be developing deregulated markets. And then uh, roughly 15 years ago or so, we got into renewables because of the carbon policies and so on. And then around you know, 10 years, the issue was, okay, so now there are a lot of renewables penetrated. How, how about how we are going to manage the demand response? And now in the last four or five years, we are talking about the smart city and microgrid. The point is, behind this plethora of technology, so we are really ready. And these technologies are pushing for the wonderful concepts that Arindam had presented, and Larissa had presented uh, about what are the different uh, models that you can think of, what are the different architecture you can think of, and technology has been silently pushing for that, but the question is always, yeah, that's, that's the technology part. The question is, what's the business case? Where does it make sense? And that's the discussion that you had. So that's the uh, technology driver element part of it. Now, when you look at the policy part of the drivers, needless to say that there are policies on the renewables in both, both the countries. But then I must also hi like to highlight that there, is, there are a specific policy in the United States for the resiliency. And the best read for you, in the interest of time, I would like to suggest you to read. There was a, a clear declaration from President's office you know, back in 2013, uh, which was the Climate Action Plan. And when you think about Climate Action Plan, it gets into the resiliency aspect, and it, it really drives what country needs to be doing. So you have a very specific policy proposition, specifically in certain parts of the country, because what happens is that's a presidential you know, Climate Action Plan, but then at the state level, everybody had to take it and had to implement it. So those are the policy elements that we are talking about. I am not aware of if there is any climate action plan getting into the resiliency aspect in India. So I would be more than happy to learn if there is one. So what my point is, again, when um, uh, our Director of Ministry of Power was leaving, I did mention to him that I would really like to brief him about some of the policy aspects. And those are the big drivers, I would say, for, the, for specific microgrid you know, development. And then the biggest driver has been the customers are becoming little utility, if I may say. And what I mean by that is that the customers who are a fairly complex customer, meaning thereby within their campus there exists a couple of substations, tens of feeders, they are getting into already some captive power plant, which has been there for ages, I would say. But then now with the advent of solar storage, they are pretty much ready for running a little utility. And that's what we mean by the changing landscape of customers. So that's a, that's a driver part of it. And so moving on to the barrier, I would say, by the way, these barriers could also be an opportunity but the biggest one in the case of microgrid, and especially advanced microgrid that Larissa has been really emphasizing on, is the multiple stakeholders. And the question that was asked, who are you solving this problem for? Actually, the answer is that you're trying to solve the problem for all the stakeholders. And here's a picture that, that you see, and this is my last slide. 
to give you orientation that this is an example slide for an example project in Philadelphia Navy Yard where it's really a commercial and industrial campus, a real estate development program by the city. So in this case, all the tenants of that campus, city is landlord in this case, there are 150 plus tenants with uh, diverse kinds of loads starting from the old Navy still exists plus all kinds of industrial outfit, many commercial outfit, example being GlaxoSmithKline has a headquarter in that campus. Urban Outfitter campus, not only they have the headquarter in the campus, but they also have the data center there. There are medical institutions within the campus. So in this case, each of them are stockholders. And needless to say that the campus gets connected to the distribution utility called Philadelphia Electric Company. So they are the stakeholder, and then also, this is in the footprint of the deregulated market page PGM. They are the stakeholder too. So a lot of discussions were there that how do you go about business case and so on, again in terms of the barrier. Actually when you go about, it's not only about just the you know, resiliency and the critical load, which is most of the key element, and Arindam explained it very well. But more importantly, what you really need to see that what each of these habitants and the constituents, the tenants of the campus would need. Today, they are being fed by this campus utility and campus utility has to do the power procurement, uh, which is a fairly complex process. You're talking about $20 million bill uh, in a year uh, for the power procurement. And so any, 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 any improvement or any innovative business model which can actually lead to the reduction in this power procurement, which may not be technology, but it's just a business arrangement, and that's exactly what Arindam was highlighting. That's part of the microgrid, and that's the barrier, but that's the opportunity too. So I must say, the barrier as well as opportunity is the business model. And, and when it comes to question of technology side, I mean, we have a lot of technology. It's about how do we integrate it. So the challenges are in the integration. And, and the reason is that the standardization has taken its own pace. Technology innovation has its own pace. So one cannot argue and really uh, be confident that, yeah, we have an integration, all everything is sorted out. And then finally, this particular example that I was giving you, um, it happens to be the case that they got the unregulated distribution grid operator capacity uh, approval from the utility commission. That doesn't happen all the time. So the point is, it had the right regulatory context to begin with, but in many cases, the extent to which you really want to solve the problem, it'll get into some regulatory construct challenges as well. Because what you are really trying to solve is that how can I maximize the asset utilization, and the asset utilization may be having a boundary line, the way you are going to be you know, exchanging the asset value between you and your peers or the neighbors and so on, and that's where the regulatory con construct comes in. So with that, I would like to hand it over to uh, Prithpal, uh, who is our uh, technology partner, and as you could see that I really stayed at a much more macroscopic level, and but much more deeper level into the microgrid itself. So Prithpal will walk us through the barriers and challenges much more from the technology perspective. And GE and Intel are having very strategic partnerships. So Prithpal. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, sir.